gets to stay 17 years anymore in one place. Wonderful thing for me and for my family to get to stay at Utah State for 17 years. Take another quick time out here on the Full Court Press. When we come back, conversation with another former Aggie, Darrell Peterson, joining us here on the Full Court Press, uh, getting caught up with what he's doing these days, but also his memories of playing under Stu Morrill and playing in the Spectrum. It's all coming up next on 106.9 FM, 1390 AM, The Fan. No, we're good. We're good. Thanks for connecting with us. Now, um, so you, uh, you played uh, at, a, at a junior college. And I want to start there. You were playing at a junior college level, and then you you start to get noticed by Division One coaches and have an opportunity to take your game to a higher level. What was it that uh, that enticed you to, to choose Utah State to go play for Stu Morrow? It had to have been the crowd. I remember the first time I came out, because I was actually committed to Auburn from junior college first. And then I had to come out of my commitment because they had a medical red shirt come and that took the scholarship away. So right before the signing period ended, because I went to Hutchinson Junior College, which is where Coach Durier, I know you guys remember Coach Durier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Coach Durier used to be the head coach there. So he came back just to check on the school and happened to see me in the coaching office, asked how I was doing, and I said, you know, uh, I'm undecided. And he was like, what you mean? I'm like, well, I had to come out my commitment. So I ended up, uh, he, he put me on the first class flight right then. I literally left the next day, got to Utah State, and was blown away. I'm an East Coast kid. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, so the snow and the mountains – was breathtaking to me and then we got on campus i got to the gym i started seeing how many the fact that we sell out almost every game that it was the 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 crowd really blew me away so i was i, I didn't I, I canceled all the other visits i had and i decided to come right there uh, Darrell, you uh you, you came into as you said, when you made your visit, you came into something that already had some momentum behind it. Utah State was already performing at a very high level, uh, huge crowds. I mean, it was the game in town. It was the ticket to go to Utah State basketball. Great string of success. What was that like as a player to try to maintain that? Or was it just because it was so exciting and so fun uh, and competing at a high level, that wasn't really wasn't that hard. It wasn't. It wasn't hard at all, to be honest with you. Uh, the the level of play, I, I, if, if I'm the I was the uh, the Mister Let's Go player, anyways. I, I'm the hype man, full of energy. Crowds really get me going. Um, I loved every home game. I can, I can tell you this: it was harder playing on the road because you don't have the crowds that we got at home. And it just was a little bit harder to get up for the games when you don't have that crowd that you normally are used to. We were talking to Terrell Peterson, former Aggie greats, played on Utah State basketball teams from 2005 to 2006, and then 2006-2007 seasons. And Darrell, uh, when you and I were communicating earlier today, lining up this interview, uh, you uh, mentioned to me that you're going to be here this weekend. You're going to be here for this special court ceremony. That's for sure. I wouldn't miss them. I wouldn't miss this in the world. Right. Because for one, I think that uh, and, and, you know, I would love to hear y'all's response on this, but I don't know if this will happen again. Right. Uh, winning coach being the all time leading uh, wins at Utah State in, in the history. I don't think anybody will surpass his wins. And if they do, it won't be in my lifetime. So I wanted to make sure that uh, I was out there for that. I wanted to make sure that I showed up for Coach because 
he like I've been very successful after basketball without basketball. Um, I, I manage music artists. I run music labels. I, I have a film company. I have a magazine. I was invited to walk the red carpet to the Grammys last year. I've done a lot that does not pertain or doesn't have anything to do with basketball. And I think a lot of that has to do with coach because that was one thing that he always told us is, you know, you, you're going to be good in basketball, but you're going to be better in life. fortunate to play in a good place like this yes. and I told you that quite often and I tried to make sure you you knew the life skill things that were going to be important and, yes. you know you were always communicating that's what's what you like to do so it doesn't surprise me what you're, what you're doing <laughs> having all these guys here today that, that played for me and you know the miles you came we we are appreciative of those kind of things so and it seems you're doing well that's, yeah yeah that, that's yeah. always the thing What's up, what's up, what's up? But today is a little special, right? It's a little different. We are broadcasting live from the heart of Salt Lake, okay? The great Salt Lake, that is. As you can see, as my background drop, we are here in the great Salt Lakes of Utah, back at my old stomping grounds. Well, a little bit because I did spend time living out here in Salt Lake City but also spent time out in Logan and as y'all know from the festivities that we've been doing from the beginnings of the, the interviews to the game we're here out here supporting Utah State and my coach Stu Morrill getting the court named after him and we are here to celebrate so I want to show you all the good things in Salt Lake City all the good things to Logan and we had to start right here at the heart in the great salt lakes. Thank you. 
at me, Schwan. Hey man. What up? We man? live, man. Say man. You know, we're gonna have to work with it, man. Documentary style ish, you feel me? But look though, we about to give y'all something that y'all ain't seen before, man. Personal look, me and B Rock back in Logan, Utah. You heard? We about to bring y'all some exclusive stuff. We're gonna uh interview, talk about it. Y'all gonna see some of our old teammates. Um, the new players, man, it's a whole whop of a day, man. Y'all just stay tuned, Rock. What they got going, man? Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, because we back in Logan, Utah, where we played for Utah State. We about to get it popping, though. We about to get a little tour. Like you said, stay tuned, though, because we got a lot of interviews coming. We got a lot of footage. Beautiful mountains going to be Mountains is not crazy. Yeah, man. You never been to Utah? I highly advise you. To let's, give him, let's give them. Let's give them. Let's give them. I mean, can y'all see that, man? Y'all been seeing the mountains uh, since I've been down here, but this right here, man, I be forgetting that it was like this. I ain't yeah, gonna kid you. Crazy. crazy, man. But yeah, we're about to uh, vlog it a little bit. Uh, we're gonna get out the car, walk around. Show y'all some of the campus stuff, um, but we got a whole whop of a day, man. Y'all just gonna have to, y'all just gonna have to watch, right? Y'all just gotta watch, man. I'll let your boys. Man, football stadium. Yeah, they wasn't that good when I was in either, but it was okay. They started to get good. Bobby Wagner was on the team, but I think he was like a freshman. So where we're taking y'all is the Aggie Ice Cream, man. Most famous thing we got out here. It's all new, man. Yeah, it says through the house. Wow. Oh, it's wow. not over here, actually. Look at me dead in my eyes. You see all the time that I have. It's not over yet. No, yeah. You go to war with whoever ain't never been by. From two to nine. I was dead, yo, ops, and none of them died. So we can come and get some after the reception. Why you pull up at one in the morning and sit on the edge of the bed? Tossing emojis till I got implant muscle went over a head. Catching my side of the studio. Make them repeat. We're gonna bring it to y'all, man. After the reception, we'll bring y'all in here. Show you some of the Aggie ice cream. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I hate a privileged rapper who don't even know what it takes. The diamonds ain't like a rainbow, that's because the necklace is a frame. Yeah, that's just a little bit of a little bit of
are live here in Logan, Utah on the football field, man. I know y'all probably asking, what are the basketball players doing on the football field? Well, really, we're just showing y'all all the things we we help build, mm. right? We just wanted to bring y'all firsthand to some of the things that we help build. So, Rock, what's some of the things that you done did since we done touched down out here in Logan? Uh, well, first and foremost, I appreciate you for having me on. Yeah, F yeah. FTV, baby. We are here in Utah where I first met you at. That's so, a fact. You know, and we, we, we created the special bond that we have. We're going on 17. 17 years. Dang, that's, <laughs> that's a minute, y'all. So we ain't saying about trends, but hey, we made the best week and we still here. Facts. But since I've been here, man, we got to, I mean, got to go to the, uh, when we first apartments stayed at Oak Ridge. Yeah, shout out to Oak Ridge. Yeah, Oak Ridge I, Apartments. That's where a lot of us, you know, first home when yep. we first touched down. It was yep. close to campus. Yep. It wasn't too far, but then we was like, nah, we got to, but you know, uh, haven't got to the Chinese restaurant I want to go to yet. We going we gonna go there though. Yeah, we we um, gonna go there. I thought it burnt down, but it was. There. I mean, I don't know. You kind of got me worried now. So. Yeah. Cause everything changed, man. Like, I've noticed that everything has kind of been updated, uh, built up different names on it. Um, like you know, Hamilton's was my favorite spot to go. And now there's no Hamiltons. It's a Holmes type of spot. So that was kind of crazy to me. Um, but, you know, it's it's still good to be back here right now. I got before we we swap, because we go. We just wanted to, to show them the football field and how, how we was showing and how we was living. Right. But uh, you got to show them the jersey that you got. Y'all will see it later and you'll get a good look of what the jersey really looks like but this man is killing it with the utah state mountain west own b-rock jersey okay with the retro look to it well we're about to get out of this uh little wind that y'all might be hearing even though i know you ain't hearing it because these microphones is official <laughs> but uh we wanted to show y'all a little bit of the, the football field we'll show you a little bit of the outsides of it before we go into the day okay so y'all stay locked in stay tuned ladies and gentlemen there's a rubies but it's called a pizzeria <laughs> oh yeah this department's ice is there my first joint right this they is go, my first apartment they go, oh right there yeah. yeah oak ridge me too yeah we about to go aggie up in there right station. now aggie station oh yeah man this is where we used to be at aggie what station was the spot come on man this is where we used to be let's go to the apartments real quick man oak ridge apartments man i threw so many Parties at this spot right here, cuz. That's what I was saying, man. We was thinking back then, man, we could have been building. Yeah. <laughs> We, we definitely well what's crazy is Chris Chris Carr used to always tell me, bro, you're gonna be the mayor of Logan. I should have stuck to that. But I didn't really want to live in Logan. But you know what the third Because you know we stayed in Salt Lake. But think about it though. Which we will take that trip tomorrow. Now that we understand, bro. Like we got a voice. Yeah, nah, facts. We got, like, people will listen to us. Facts. And especially if you, oh, you play the Utah State. Facts. Yeah. Let's let's go in the Aggie Station and see what they do. I need something to drink anyway. Yeah, you right. We got a voice. Hold today. on. Tell, tell them about that real quick. Tell them about what's going on. Yeah, I got a, a, a Facebook message from a, a lady on the board of trustees of my high school. The Orm School, a small little boarding school in Arizona that changed my life. Ask me and a couple other, you know, people that was in my grade class to be on the board of trustees, or at least come listen and see what it's about, and and hear them out. And if I can have a voice and opinion on it, I can help some kids, especially in New York City, and not only New York, but any other surrounding, you know, metropolitan state areas that help some kids change their life. Man, that's what it's <coughs> about. It's about changing somebody's life. How you doing, baby? Don't skip nothing. No, no, play this. This the best album in the world, baby. Very peaceful. You know, just listen. Get some game. It'll take you far. I'm sorry, sweetie. You better off without me. You better off without me. But I love you now. 
you so much knowledge now. You're free, baby. Suck it to me. Oh. You know you're so beautiful. Very peaceful. Very peaceful. Very peaceful. Very peaceful. Probably two of, two of, two of Utah State's greatest three-point shooters right now. I was there, couldn't communicate with anyone. One day I'm walking down the street and I see the LDS missionaries and I sprint towards them. I grab them and I invite them to my house. And uh, so I grew up in Provo and I was in high school and, and I was getting recruited by some schools, but the ultimate goal for me was to follow my brother's footsteps and go to BYU. And once they offered me, I, 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 I accepted. And this is my main man right here. I took care of him when he was in school, and I right. took care of him after school, right. didn't I? Yeah, all right. Fred, be right. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. I can't get a big check in there. I was just, I was just. Uh, but thank you guys so much. Um, First and foremost, I couldn't have missed this for the world. Um, when I first heard about it, I was like, I'm in. Called the rail up, like, you going? He's like, ah, I'm like, yo, bro, you going. And he is, so. But my name is Bernard Rock. Um, the reason why I probably came up here, because I mean, they have a lot of oldies that just, or a lot of youngies that just talk. Um, we was kind of Coach Morrow's beginning. Yeah. <sighs> The spectrum is our first year, Tony Brown's on the team, right? Number nine, Utah, comes into town and they are good, really good. Just came up the national championship game. Game's close, goes down to the wire. We call a timeout late in the game. Coach goes to one of our old standbys. Players, you'll remember this, Punch. Remember Punch, right? So it's a uh, screen down for uh, Farrow Davis. He gets the ball. Troy Rolls got a backdoor lob. Doesn't take it. Farrell drives, got Donnie shaped up, but Utah happens to be in a triangle and two. And they kick it over to Tyrone Alec. And Tyrone Alec fires it on it. Oh no, right through the bottom of the net and the crowd goes crazy. The spectrum was special from that time on. Then I think, suck it up. <laughs> get, a, get a little tougher, that's all we need to do. We don't need to be kinder and gentler. I don't think I could coach today because I just did that. <laughs> you, got, you got to just pat guys on the back and tell them how great they are. And that wasn't my strong suit. So. <laughs> but you guys were great. You, we don't have success without great players. And thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate it. Special to me. Thanks. Okay, when I say we have a Aggie legend in the house, I will say that because I'm only bringing on legends, but this is one of those legends everybody knows about, okay? Even ESPN, when they did their special and brought not Bill, but Wow Bill back to Logan. Bill, how you doing? Yo, I'm doing well, just enjoying our time here. You know, it's always funny. We were talking earlier, yeah. and you were saying, man, it's crazy. I'm not a player, but I get to experience all these same things. And what did I say to you? It ain't no different. <laughs> you were just as instrumental to the team as we were, or at least to Stu Morrill's wins. Hey, I wasn't putting buckets through those hoops, though. You know, I was just, I was just real good looking. And ain't nothing wrong with being good looking, yeah. you know, uh, because being good looking is what gets us hey, there it is. to these days. Yeah. Right. You know, but like it's, it was so fun for me because to be honest, I'm not a basketball fan. OK. I only can because Ty, who is my best friend. Right. You know, he's like, hey, you got to come check out Utah State basketball. Right. You know, growing up in the Valley, I'd been to a lot of games, but I had never been down on the front row part of the match. In the pit. Dude, it's crazy. <laughs> sitting up at the top is different than sitting down below. Yes, it is. And then hearing what you folks are going through and the, and the crap you're saying to each other and the other team, 
it's like you're part of the game. Yes, sir. And, and so to be able to be down there was something completely different for me. And I loved every second of it. You, you know, know it, it's crazy, Bill, because we look at you as a part of the team. And I know you probably experienced that because we all show so much love to you. But yeah. not just us. I mean, look at what ESPN did for you. So talk to us about that because I want to know what that experience was like where ESPN did the special on you. You know, it was cool. So they flew me out, and I actually left the WAC tournament when it was in Reno. I didn't get to make it to the last game because they had flown. They were right. flying me out from Reno. Right. And, uh, you know, I got a little flag, hey, you're selling out. And it's just like, well, you know, sorry, yeah, no but choice. I'm going out there. And uh, I walked through the doors. It was the ESPNU campus at the time in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Dick Vitale was sitting right there. Wow. Chatting with some folks. And I was just like, that's Dickie V. You know, I was just losing my mind. And uh, walking through the halls and seeing guys like Scott Van Pelt, Andy Katz, and uh, I did a bit with Ric Flair, Charlie Murphy was there, and I felt like I was living a, a sports center commercial. I was, I'd ran to the bathroom, you know, and as I'm, I'm walking, you know, to the stall, Rick Flair's on the phone with Hulk Hogan. He's like, Terry, we got to do this. We got we got these. We got, uh, you know, this guy coming up. And I was just like, he's talking to Hulk Hogan <laughs> in the freaking bathroom. This is the coolest thing ever. And, uh, you know, it would always stick with me as I was sitting there and I was chatting with Andy Katz. And uh, he was like, so what does the team think? I'm like, well, the team's my best friends. We hang out. That's right. You know, Ty West is my, and we hang out with, you know, Pooh Williams, all these guys. He's like, wait. The players like you? Yeah, shout out and to Pooh Williams, man. He's one of my, the kids that I recruited coming in here. Oh, dude, Pooh was the man. And, you know, great, great player here. Love to have him, Pooh, here. But uh, it was, they could not believe that the team embraced me. He's like, anywhere else, anywhere else, the team would have said, see ya. Like, we don't like you. You're taking too much of the spotlight from us. And I was like, well... They, they like me and I've done nothing but facilitate a great environment. Yeah, and that and that that right there is one of the, the best things ever because it is so good to have the the crowd a part of everything that we have going on. And it's one of those things where you can't miss a moment or a yeah. second of a Utah State game because the fans are so in tune. The fans yeah. will keep you on the market yeah, for the game. The the herd is, is another level. If you ask me, best in the nation. It, I, I agree. I agree. So before we let you go and get you out of here, what is it like being a part of Cash Valley? Hey, man, you know, it's, it's, it's a great place to be. I feel like it's a loving, welcoming environment for, you know, a crazy dude, pretty conservative spot, but they really welcomed me with wide wide arms for a dude that was half naked all the time. That's right. You know, which conservative values don't really line up there. That's right. For whatever reason, they supported and loved me, and I love Cash Valley for it. Well, we love you, uh, Utah State. Thanks. Loves you, Utah State basketball loves you <laughs> as we're here at the alumni reception. Hey, it's been awesome. And we will be there tonight. Hey, partying tonight for Coach Stu. And checking it out, man. Hey, appreciate it. Bill, you the best. Thanks, man. Okay, okay. I am here, even though we are a couple of days away from really announcing it. This won't come out till it's announced. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and say, with the Hall of Famer, <laughs> Gary Wilkinson, how are you doing there, sir? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing really good. Well, you know, I didn't actually have the pleasure of playing with you, but I did have the pleasure of playing with you when you came in before I left. That's right. Right? We were playing in the summer. Yeah. So I got to see what the Hall of Fame was going to look like. <laughs> okay, I noticed it. So let's talk a little bit about your career. Because sure. you didn't just have an awesome career. You had a awesome career. <laughs> Plus you played alongside of JC, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So also being a Hall of Famer with the Hall of Famer. What and was Ty it like? Wesley, who's a Hall of Famer. Come on now. We was going to get to him next. <laughs> We're going to get to Ty next because we want to make sure we get him on okay. this too. Okay. So what was it like playing with JC? Yeah, it was uh, it was a question of whether you were going to get the ball or not. Correct. Yeah. Correct. But uh, when, you have, when you have a score like that, it takes a lot of pressure off you offensively. You have a little bit more room to operate. And so it opened things up for a big man. You like playing with guards, you That's know, that, that can shoot and that can create. So it was great playing with him. It gave me a lot of opportunity. And, you know, the crazy thing about that is because I played alongside of JC. So the ball definitely 
didn't always swing back around, right. but when it went in the basket, you understood why. Right. And Coach's system was also very two guard and power forward. Uh, you know, that, that's what the basis of. Yeah. So when you were here, you played both the four and the five. Mm-hmm. What was it like, and what was your favorite position? Yeah, so I think I, I, probably the five, just because it was it was more up my alley mm-hmm. here. I didn't do that professionally; I was more the four. But I think for me, when I was getting recruited, Utah State was one of the schools that I was like, "That's the best big man coach in the country." It's That's easy, correct. It, it's easy for me <laughs> to make a decision. I was I, I have scholarships from uh, Miami, Texas Tech, Nebraska, all these other schools in the country. But I was like, "Look, that guy's the best big man coach in the country," and that that team wins. They Ugh. win. So I'll go play in one of the best venues in the country with one of the best teams and for one of the best big man coaches. That's easy. So and, and what's funny about that is I actually thought about that later on, right? Because Coach's legacy is by far one of the best coaching legacies you can get, yeah. right? Especially staying at a place so long. Um, Because the loyalty just isn't there anymore, right? right? And and we know now NIL has really lowered the the loyalty. So what is it like from yourself being someone knowing what it's like playing under coach, but what it's like now, Yeah. right? Because I don't know, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about the the shoot-around and having everybody at the shoot-around. Coach wouldn't allow that. Yeah. Coach wasn't playing that. <laughs> we, he would have kicked everybody out. Yeah. It wasn't going to be any talking right. while that's going on. So what what is it like being a Aggie uh, uh, commentator, right? Because yeah. I see you and I hear you on Aggie stations. So being the person on the court and now off the court, what is that like? It's, it's a completely different perspective. I think you get – the game looks completely different mm-hmm. as a spectator. When you're out there playing, things – move differently and so I think you know now the game is com- completely different than when I played we there aren't postmen like I played the post anymore they like I'd be a stretch four and so that's what we see a lot I mean great Osibor this year on the block he's been, tough he's been tough and that's kind of reminiscent of old Aggie power for for sure Nate Harris Ty Wesley so on and so forth he so, really reminds me of Ty yes when I sure. see him play I see a lot of Ty yep. Wesley in his game uh, yep. maybe a little bit better three-point shooter yeah but not he doesn't take a bunch of threes either. But it just reminds me a lot of time. Yeah, and I've, I've said that on air too. I'm like his his footwork on the block, his awareness, his ability to create from that position is a lot like Ty. And uh, these, you know, the game, this this team and the game is they're they're better players. I mean, I remember listening to Larry Bird talk about his day compared to what it is. It's like no one was doing what players are doing now. That's you right. Know? And so, That's right. I, I'm not much of a hater. Like I look at these guys, I'm like they're talented. They're they're getting better. People, players are getting better and better and better. And it's fun to watch. And the Aggies this year have been fantastic. So let's talk about the NIL then. Sure. What would it have been like for you as a NIL player? Do you think that you would be so money focused, or would you be more brand conscious of the school? Yeah. See, and the, I don't think that. I think any pl- any college player that's going to get offered money to play basketball, I think if none of us would say- have said no. Right. I was so broke in school, right, right. and I was, like, scrounging to go get a hot and ready pizza, you know? <laughs> right. So someone wants to say, hey, I'll pay you $15,000 a month. Okay. Come on. But the one thing, and I've talked to Utah State players about this current players, I said, look, don't sacrifice your legacy for money. Mm. I'm like, when you're, when you're my age – the things that you've built mm. become more important mm. than the things that you've earned in oh. terms of your monetary fulfillment. And, and not, it's not to say that money's not great and earning money's not great. It's just to say that there's going to be more important things to you later in life that you're not going to realize now. And I would suggest that you don't sacrifice that just to go chase the dollar. Because you can, like Mason Falsla, he can build, he can be here for four years. Man, five years, he's tough. And he can ball. And I'm like, dude, you can build, you can be Hall of Famer. Come on now. Legacy here. But... You know, and, and he deserves some money, I guess, if the NIL is the thing, which it is. There's no getting around it. But I don't see why they couldn't hear, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. we are in a uh, nickname Cash Valley. Right. And <laughs> right. there's plenty of, I, I, you know, being out here, I have, I've been blown away. Yeah. I have not seen this much new buildings, new look. The mall was a little scarce. Yeah. <laughs> but I just, it's, it, it has it really blown me away, yeah. right? And it's one of the things that I would not have thought about 
even looking like this uh, now. So I'm hoping that maybe they can, you know, ap uh, approach some of these deals out here. There's Cash Valley yeah. Bank. Yeah. There's, there's, you know, <laughs> right. there's, there's a lot of stuff out here that, that could yeah. make it really work out. There's money in local. Shout out to Jerry Bovey. Man. The man, the myth. That is the man there that made all of this yeah. happen. Um, well, Gary, you, 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 uh, before we finish up, you are a Utah State legend. What is it like being on campus because you are such a legend? Yeah. It depends on who I'm walking, like who I'm with. The older generation, they remember. The younger generation, they don't know. Right, right. So, right. Um, I will say Cache Valley is a basketball town. Right. So walking around the valley, walking around here, a lot of people remember. A lot of people remember your team, my team, those teams, and said that was the best time in Aggie basketball. Yes. I was so fun to watch. And I remember when I was getting recruited to Utah State, I'd watch you guys. You'd beat Utah. You'd yeah. beat the biggest teams in the state, and yeah. you'd be playing at a high level going to postseason. I was like, oh, that's, an easy, that's, that's an easy choice. That's so right. It's, it's great to, be, to live here. I mean, I went and played professionally, came back here, set up shop. And we're happy. Gary, you're you're not just a basketball legend, man. You are a legend as a man. Thank you, man. Here in uh, Logan, Utah, you really uh, taking the voice because Al's always been the voice. Yeah. But I think that not only would it was it a good time for somebody else, but it was also a good time for a player. Yeah. Somebody that the people knew, understood, listened to talk basketball. And uh, I listen and I watch all the time, man. The yeah. game's on FS1 tonight. Yeah. So uh, I won't be on this. I won't be on okay. this call, unfortunately. But okay. I'll be up with you in the suite. Oh we'll well, that's out. all that matters, man. <laughs> we'll be in the suite, man. <laughs> so y'all will check us out then. Okay, I am here again with another Aggie legend. Okay, some people say. I, I like to say J.C. Carroll was the best player at Utah State history, mainly because he was on my team. And he put up the most points in Utah State history. But if you ask some of the other players, they will bring up this gentleman right here, Mr. Sean Daniels. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. So how does it feel to know that a lot of your teammates and a lot of the teammates after you say that you are the best player in Utah State history? Hey, uh, um, first of all, I want to say I've seen JC play mm -hmm. in person. Mm -hmm. A couple times uh, they came to play down in Bakersfield, and, and I went to, to the games. And uh, dude, what he did is was crazy. Was I mean, that's it's hard to argue with the, with that talent. But hey, you know, I did my thing while I was here. Hell, my own. So. Well, weren't you a part of the only NCAA March Madness team? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. We. I, I want to say it was an earlier team that may have won a game, but okay. But in the last. Last one. That's it. That's yeah. it. So I want to know about what's going on now. And then I have another question about uh, what you did basketball after. But I want to hear about now. What What are some of the things that you have going on now? Uh, just married uh, back in Bakersfield, California. Uh, worked for the railroad. Engineer for BNSF. What was it like transitioning out of basketball? Because that was one of the things that I had the most – I want to say trouble mentally with. I could do it physically, mm -hmm. but mentally it was a lot harder transitioning from basketball into real life. So what was that like for you? You want me to shed a tear? Yeah. Uh, but um, it was tough. I mean, because you get so used to uh, since the age, you know, fourth grade, fifth grade, having teammates that you with every day practicing with, you know, going to school with a lot of them, hanging out, you know, and, you know, playing professionally, teammates that you with every day, you know, share apartments with, things like that. And then it's like nothing. You don't have that. <laughs> you don't have that waking up in the morning mm. for practice or shoot around or games, travel. And some of the best times was to travel, you know, on the plane, on the bus, joking, in the hotel rooms, things like that, that, you know, you don't get after after basketball and you're telling my story right now okay because oh, yeah. it was so hard oh, yeah. that was probably the hardest thing was the brotherhood you know i just talked with jc and it's like i hadn't seen him i mean I, it's like i seen him yesterday and i haven't seen the man in 15 to 17 years yeah and it doesn't feel like it a bit you know i i see you around your teammate shout out to b ray Oh, yeah. Out there, shout out to B Rock. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of them out there, oh, yeah. a lot of B's. Yeah. 
Uh, and, you know, we, we're just all one big Aggie family. So talk about what it was like playing up under Coach because he was such a, a inspiration basketball to everybody. What was it like being one of his star players? Oh, it was awesome. I mean, B-Rock, I ain't seen B-Rock probably in over 20 years. Right. And, you know, B-Ray, I mean, I just got back in contact with B-Ray in the last two years and through text message and things like that. And um, uh, Deion Bailey, you know, I, I, you know, we've been texting for years back and forth. That's, that's that was my roommate, that's my boy, you know, so we stay in contact. But, you know, being here was, was, was crazy, man. I mean, just, just looking out now, just seeing how, how beautiful it is out there. And, and man, like I said, I haven't been here in 20 years. And it's like to see the people, man, and the, the embrace and, you know, the just the teammates and, and people that, you know, I met here. I'm like, man, it's like you hear stories of, you know, you got friends forever. This is truly an example of friends forever. And I'm like, man, I'm just blown away, man. I just, I, now I just wish I would have got back sooner. You know, I, we were saying that earlier. We were talking about that earlier. Like, what took us so long to get back? Um, and and why we need to be doing this more, yeah. right? Because not only B Rock says something in his speech, man, that kind of really stuck with me hard when he was talking about the past being the teacher. Yeah. Because I think sometimes we forget about the past, or we at least try to forget about the past, when that's what taught us who we are today. And I will take that from him and and keep that because. The past is the teacher. So as we wrap up, give the fans, the Aggie fans, what it's like playing in that spectrum. Because they will experience it tonight, but what is it like playing in the spectrum? Yeah, my first time in the spectrum was uh, on my recruiting trip. It was, I missed my flight out of Bakersfield and I think I ended up getting, getting to Salt Lake real late. And uh, Coach, Coach D took me to the spectrum. It's pitch black in there, and I'm looking up there like, wow, this is crazy. And then when the season starts, and we played, I think our first big game in there was was BYU or somebody. That thing was rocking, man. It was I, so I tell people all there. the time, because I'm from North Carolina, yeah. okay? That North Carolina-Duke rivalry, yeah. it's one, it's, it is a rivalry. Yeah. But I tell them at any time, you come and experience a Utah State versus Utah or a Utah State versus BYU, mm -hmm. and it will give you the exact same feeling. Yes, that the crowd was they just always packed it out, sold out loud the whole game. And man, we was lucky to we beat Utah with the crowd like that. We didn't get that BYU game, but if anything I can, you know, look back on my time, it was the two times we lost to BYU. I wish I would have got at least one of them. I know that's right, man, because I, I wanted to get BYU at BYU. I, we got beat by about 30 when, <laughs> when we tried that game. But, Sean, it is a blessing being here with you, man. A pleasure. I can't wait to walk out on the uh, on the court, center court, celebrate with Coach, but celebrate with us, man, because I didn't get a chance to play with you. Uh, I heard so much about you, but I never got a chance. So now I get to walk out that tunnel one more time. Oh, yeah with Sean Danes. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You know. Okay, we are here once again. I know you saw this man the whole time. You will keep seeing this man throughout this whole time. Why? Because this is not only my business partner, but he is also my brother. Okay? From another. B-Rock Bernard Rock. Bernard Rock. How you doing there, my good friend? Hey, I'm doing well, man. You know, you, you had a speech today, yes, man. I yes. wasn't expecting to see you up there speaking. I wasn't expecting me either. Okay. I try to say let's not talk about the past enough because why you want to keep living in those days? What are you currently doing now? Like, what's now is relevant. But the past was the teacher. And a moment like this is what the past is all about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so talk to me about it. What was it like getting up there in front of all of your uh, few, your old teammates and some of the teammates you didn't play with? What was it like getting up there talking about coach? Man, it, it was good and it was different. Like I say, when I came here as a player, a lot of my teammates knew me as this vocal player, but you know, it was like, you a knucklehead, B-Rock. And then now I'm kind of coming back. You know, I, I addressed it. I, I owned up to my, my mistakes. I owned up to, you know, my responsibilities. I, I'm, I'm holding myself accountable. But like I say, now that I, I'm, I'm where I'm at now, from where I was when I came here, and now, like you said, coming back to see my, my old teammates, um, some teammates that came after me, 
the players, the, I mean, the coaches and, you know, their families and the people who watched you. And to hear, you know, come back and speak the way I spoke, it kind of touched a lot of people. And a lot of people was like, man, thank you. Bro, you, know? you had, bro, bro. Because <laughs> one thing I told, I told my mom, my dad, and of course, JQ Sports PR. I ain't crying. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy and I ain't going to cry. But you almost brought a tear out, my boy. I got through ties. Ties was kind of hard nah, to get through. Fact. Because he not only was telling like a real story, like I have a very similar story to that too, uh, of his where you think you're going somewhere else and then they don't have a scholarship for you. Mm. And now you have to go somewhere else. And you know, Utah State was the landing spot for me and Ty and you yourself. You know, so talk about that a little bit. Talk about being back on the court the first time in a little while, um, seeing the shoot around, being in the locker room. The players really took to mm -hmm. us too. Mm -hmm. uh, so shout out to the players. Um, what was it like? Man, like I said, just, just being back here is, like I said, this is where I had the best two years of my life. Facts. Um, and then to come back here and like you said, to walk down that tunnel, to talk to the players that had embraced us, even though you know, I had to give them kind of a, a history lesson. Of course, of course. But, you know, that, that goes with the territory. And, and like I told them, you know, we have a record that's been standing for 23 years, the only team that won an NCAA tournament. And I hope they, they have a chance to win it this year. We need that, man. We need yeah, that. Man. And not that I want that record to be broken, because right. I don't, especially because it's your team. Just like I told JC, I was kind of excited when, his, uh, when Sam didn't reach. Uh, JC's uh, all-time point score because not only are we attached to that, but uh, we had something to do mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. So I, as much as I do want them to win a national, I mean, a, a, a NCAA tournament game, it's cool, man, because we got a chance to see you pop up on TV Facts. the other day, right? So what was that like popping up on TV? Well, first and foremost, you know, you called me. <laughs> Uh, number one, it's like, yo, turn on your FaceTime. You on TV. Yo, you on TV, bro. Like, <laughs> so, you know, that was exciting, like you said, man, just to know that you they, they still recognize you in, in, a, in a city that you helped create and start, and just to be recognized 23 years later is, I gotta say, it's almost like legendary status. It's legendary. It's legendary. Yeah, it, it, it's so, legendary. Yeah, like, bro, you just came and gave me chills when you said that, right. because that's a word that uh, Shador Sanders is using right now, but it's such a a word that is uh man i said this earlier when i was ta talking in one of the interviews when you said the past is the teacher mm -hmm. not only did that really hit a nerve it put things in perspective because i think a lot of times even with as with black history i think sometimes we should uh i i, I normally say we should you know suppress some of those ideas mm -hmm. but because of you what you just said today i'm thinking we maybe we do Maybe we learn from the past, we use that as teachings, so now we don't re repeat the same thing in the future. So you really, you really, you really was talking today, man. You really was talking. I can't wait for the people to hear it um, and see it in our documentary and what we got going on. Now, before we get out of here, I know we talked about it a little bit earlier, but you got to show them the jersey, man. Yeah, man. Don't oh, stand up because they can't see you if you stand oh, up. My bad, my bad. But, <laughs> you know, Utah State. Number 10, um, I got shout out to my guy Ajax. And on the back of it, you know, got to put the rock on it, baby. Got to put the rock on it. That's you know? fire, that, man. That's, that's, fire. That's, that's the last name I tell everybody that, you know, it's a dope last name, number one. The dopest last name, right. man. Rock. Right. Hard so, as a rock. Exactly. You know, so, but. Clement you know, Rock ain't land on us. What we going to say? My mantra? Come on, the now. rock. Be the rock. the rock. Shoot the rock. Be the rock. Be the rock. Come on. Okay. Okay. When I say this here is what we call a blessing, this is a blessing, man. I'm here with my teammate, my two guard. I'm going to say it, the best player in Utah State history, J.C. Carroll, man. How are you doing, J.C.? Hey, I'm doing great. You're too kind. Awesome to see you. Awesome to talk. A little hoops, a little life, whatever we're going to talk about. But uh, awesome, man. You know, it's been a minute. It has been a while. It's been a minute. So there's been a lot that we could cover in such a short period of time, right? So let's talk about your playing days, okay? Right. You are from Evanston, Wyoming. Yes. Talk Evanston, about Wyoming. it. Talk about it. 10 or 12,000 people. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely not a hotbed of basketball. <laughs> but uh, love the sport. 
had had a dad that coached basketball. I was in the gym every day of my life. Shout out to Mr. Carroll. Shout out to Mr. Carroll, Coach Carroll, as most people know him. But uh, look, he told me a couple things when I was little. He said, one, um, if you're the best shooter on any, t you'll make any team you ever try out for. And so I made that a lifelong pursuit to be the best shooter I could. And uh, you know, the thing he always told me was, was be humble. So as I start to have success, try to stay humble, try to. Uh, you know, take care of those that came after me. You did with both of those, man. Uh, the shooter, you are not just the best shooter I've ever seen. Nationally, you are top five three-point uh, shooter in the nation of NCAA, yeah. right? Period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so you didn't just shoot the ball. You shot the ball well. Shot the ball well, shot a high clip. And look, but th there's a lot of time and effort went, went into it on my part. But you have to have coaches that trust you with it. You have to have teammates that'll that'll pass you the ball. You have to have teammates that'll set screens. So, you know, I'm able to get good shots. I was able to make a lot of shots because I, I played on great teams. Yeah, man. We, you know, one of your teams is getting highlighted tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, at the game, uh, which, you know, it's a big game tonight, man. Utah State plays Boise. You remember our Boise? Our Boise? Because yeah. Boise was good, but they weren't, like, at the top when we were playing, right? Oh. So they had Kobe Carl. Yeah. But uh, we had a crazy yep. home game against them. Yeah. We had to come game. back and uh, what, about down 10 with oh, like yeah. a minute left. No, we, we came back big time. Uh, I think you made a couple big shots. Um, you know, Kobe, uh, Kobe Carl's dad, George Carl. Came to the game. Was at the game. Yeah. And I remember I hit one shot uh, from the wing corner three. And when I shot it, I honestly thought, I think I airballed it. I remember I that I one. I airballed yeah, it. Yeah, I remember that one. And splashed it in. <laughs> We end up winning by a point or yep, two. Yep. Uh, unbelievable. Boise State, great program right now, and we, we definitely have some good battles. Okay, so you had a couple of big-time games, right? Like, I remember a game, 44, you had yeah. 44 against New Mexico State. Yep. Uh, that was when Reggie Theus was the coach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is your best game? when If you had to say, okay, I sat down, I'm thinking about my career, at Utah State, what was the best game you think you had? All right, good. Um, obviously, I remember the 44-point game. Uh, look, when we beat Nevada, that was big. I don't. That, that wasn't necessarily my best game, but yeah. as a team, yeah. Beat nationally ranked Nevada back to back was, which was unbelievable. Uh, my freshman year, I, uh, the championship game in the big the West, sent us to the Big West, the sent us to the tournament. But I had a game. We played Hawaii. Um, in the WAC tournament, in like the semifinals, to go to the final. And I finished with 24 points and 14 rebounds. Mm. And for me, given the Matt Lejeski that guarded me, the magnitude of the game, that's one of my the games where I felt like I, I did about everything I could to, to try and help us win. Well, you know, through the years, man, I've always talked about some of the best players that I've ever played with. Um, and being from North Carolina, the home of Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah. Basketball is always super huge. Um, and there's been no other player that's been better than you. Okay? And I had to, you know, that was all not always the best for me because I came in very similar of a guard yeah. like yourself. Honestly. Just a little bit. Well, I wasn't in there. Nobody's the, the score you, you and that, that we're going to set that apart. But as far as just the shooter coming off screens and being a two guard. So I had to switch my position up a little bit to play alongside of you. So, uh, you know, the one good thing that I always think about when it comes to basketball is playing and playing at a high level yeah. and playing with you. We played at such a high level. You know, I bring back a lot of the memories just being here in Logan. Right. And we had a time, you know, like uh, me and you, we were always close, mm -hmm. uh, never the closest, obviously, because of our backgrounds coming from two different sides of the country. Yeah. Uh, our religious background, <laughs> that was something that was different for me coming out yeah. here. Um, before we get out of here, I want you to talk about what it's like going on missions because the missions are super mainstream here in Utah. Yeah, so are. all the Utah schools, Wyoming, different uh, Hawaii, yeah. deal with the, the students going on missions. So talk a little bit about you and you going on your mission and how that kind of helped or didn't help your college career. Yeah, honestly, uh, for those that aren't from around Utah, Utah is a, it has a very a strong religious faith that goes through it. And honestly, young men are asked to go on missions at the age of 19. We spent two years of our lives in a foreign country or someplace we're not supposed or we're not we're not from 
And we go because we think we have something that can help better people's lives. That's honestly why we go. Uh, we go, we, we're away from our family, we're away from our friends, we learn new languages, uh, we learn new cultures, and it helps us grow up as men, honestly it does. And then being a college athlete, uh, one of the greatest gifts we get as college athletes is we get to come and I get to hang out with a guy like you from a different part of the, right. the country. That's right. I get to learn a little bit about your culture. That's right. A uh, little bit about your experiences. And we get to meet people, interact in ways that otherwise we wouldn't if At we all. were just stuck here um, living a normal college life. So we get to have those experiences. So those are some of my favorite things about sports, about athletics, college sports in particular is I, I have friends, teammates, brothers across the country. That's right that uh, I've been able to interact with and, and it's been a while since we've seen each That's other. That's true. But it's almost like... Never happened. Like, like, like I saw happened, you yesterday. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. we have that common thread. Um, we have that brotherhood. We've been through battles. We've been through the fire. Yeah. And uh, we... And we can come together and it's like we catch up right where we left off. That's right, man. JC, it is a pleasure catching up with you. This is the best player in Utah State history. I'm saying it, so I'm sorry, Sam. Okay, <laughs> Sam Moore, you were great, but you weren't my teammate, all right? And you didn't put up the most points in school history. You were second. Still got a little bit to go. Um, I'm, I am politicking right now. I'm saying it. JC needs his own statue, okay? And I'm politicking for the time that it comes for Coach JC Carroll. Hey. At Utah State. But we're not going to say nothing hey. about that just yet. All right, all right, yeah. We're going to, uh, because uh, I love Coach Sprinkle. Oh, yeah, he's doing a great job. He is a great coach. Yeah. Uh, I hope he stays here a long time, just like how our coach did. Yes. Right? Agreed. The loyalty that we have here at Utah State, I think, is a little bit different than most places. So, Absolutely. Uh, wait, before we go, okay. I got to get your uh, synopsis on the team this year. What all do you right. think about the team this year? I like the team a lot. I've been able to watch them play a few times, been a few practices. They play really hard. Mm -hmm. Like one thing that, that Coach Spring has got to do is play hard. These yeah. guys practice a lot. They practice hard. They're a physical team. And uh, despite uh, they're not the most uh, skilled team per se, but they got kids that can play. Great Osabor. Yeah. Great big man. Tough. Great hands, Tough. rebounds, scores. Right. right. Bring uh, the ball up, uh, up the court. Yep. Darius, uh, their point guard. DB. I mean, this this guy's got uh, he's like five years of experience, and you see it out there. Yeah, he runs the team on defense, sets the on defense. He runs the team on offense. Yeah. he just when he's on the court, you have. He reminds me of Mark Brown. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Mm -hmm. That was that was you played with Mark, didn't you? No, he was just before me. Year before, yeah, year before me. I your got freshman year yeah. was his senior. I mean, your freshman year, he was already one year removed. Yeah, yeah. Well, JC, we appreciate you, man, catching up with you, and yeah. I will see you tonight, my friend, yeah, when we are on the court celebrating for Coach. Absolutely. Can't wait. Let's okay, so we are here with my favorite coach in the world, the best coach in the world, and I don't know what else to say, but this reception was so nice. Coach, how you doing? Stu Moore is in the building. Darrell, it's great to see you. I'm doing fine. A little emotional after today. It was, uh, I had no idea players were going to stand up and speak and uh, just people were, you know, I, I don't think I was nice enough to deserve this. I, as you know, I was, uh, I was pretty strong. I believed in coaching kids hard. Never, I think I was fair. Always. But, but I was, I wanted guys to play hard. And I wanted, you know, Ty Wesley once said, I said, Ty, was it hard to play for? And he said, well, not if you did what you're supposed to. You know, and what's crazy about that, coaches, I feel the same way. Um, I think that it was very easy playing for you. I actually tell people that all the time. Like, the workouts, uh, I remember getting recruited, and I had a lot of military coaches recruit me, and I didn't want to play for a coach that had a military style. And you didn't have a military style. Like, you had a hard tough stern style but it really fit who i was as a person so um it was it was easy playing for you they they asked me uh in some of the interviews what's what are what's one of the things that you're most known for in my mind and for me is winning right first because i don't know of a coach that coaches as much as or won as much as you did also the loyalty right the loyalty that you had with a one program i always say this is what most would call a stepping stone program and for you you made it home well you know i grew up in utah so coming to utah state was something i was familiar with uh, i knew i knew what the place was like i knew what you know the people were like and i always thought you know if if we have a little fun 
if we laugh a little bit, then I can push kids harder. And we tried to have a little fun, you know. We they were talking today about the sweep dance, and imagine right. me imagine me trying to dance. <laughs> but uh, you know, we laughed about things, and there were times in practice I'd say something off the wall, and you guys would get a kick out of it. And at the same time, it was expected to play hard. It was expected to you know to play defense, and you know it. Uh, Loved having all these guys here today that that have played for me and you know the miles you came we we are appreciative of those kind of things so and it seems you're doing well and that's, yeah yeah that, that's yeah. always the thing yeah and you know I, I contribute a lot of that to you as well now obviously my parents but I, I contribute the the after the plan because you always taught that that was something that you always made sure that we did was not just basketball you could be more than that and I always felt like I was more than that I always felt like. I was in media, right? I was always, I remember one thing you always told me, you, you said, Darrell, you're on front of every paper. You're everywhere in the campus. What could be better for you? And I thought about that. That was such a true statement because that was exactly who, who I was. Now, before you get out of here, what was it like coaching at Utah State with such players like a J.C. Carroll, a Ty Wesley, a Gary Wilkinson, who will be also in the Hall of Fame here. Yep. What was it like coaching those types of guys? Well, I had I had great guys. I had great kids. I call you guys kids. You're not kids anymore. But uh, I'll care. forever be your kid, Coach. <laughs> well, thanks, Terrell. You know, high, high character guys, guys that, that you could trust to do what you were trying to teach them and you know I mean I love the the Michigan football coach that's just left and went to the NFL that's Jim right. Arbaugh uh, you know his dad always said who's got it better than us nobody. no one and you know nobody and that's that's I always thought you guys were fortunate to play at a good place like this yes and I told you that quite often and I tried to make sure you you knew the life skills things that were going to be important and yes you know, you were always communicated. That was what you like to do. So it doesn't surprise me what you're, what you're doing. Very true. Uh, but uh, I, I'm happy to see you're successful. I'm happy to see you're enjoying life. And that's always gives me great pleasure. Well, Coach, we appreciate you stopping by, man. We know you got a busy schedule, got a lot to do. You got the court named after you. How about that? First one in Utah, the and, state of Utah. I, and, and, Coach, <laughs> I don't think it will happen again. I will, I will, I will say this on camera. It will not happen again. Well, I, don't, I hope it doesn't happen on this court because right. you have to get out of sander. <laughs> <laughs> Sand it up, you know. But thanks, Sherelle. It's been a pleasure visiting with you. Yes, sir. We'll see you tonight. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Make me sweat. Make me hotter. Make me lose my breath. Make me water. Make me sweat. Make me hotter. Make me lose my breath. Keep my cool, but tonight I'm whining. I'm a beast in a dangerous mood. Can you match my timing? Mm -hmm. Telling me that you're really about it. Watch your hiding. Oh, talk is cheap. So show me that you understand. I like it. We are out here in the middle of campus and I wanted to bring you a little sight of what it looks like. We got the Aggie A to the left. I went and did classes on all of these buildings. That building there, I had newspaper class. That building there was where most of my journalism stuff was taken at. This is right here was campus. You got the library behind us. B Rock, was it the same for you when you was out here? Were you where were you going to class? Walking there, there, all the way. Nice little walk. Nice little walk. Nice little walk. Campus is pretty big. Um, as you can see, it's pretty empty right now. But uh, if it was campus time, it'd be going crazy. So uh, we just wanted to show y'all a little bit of what it looked like on here. You see the mountains in the back. Shit. 
something like a mountain man at this point, okay? But, uh, yeah, man, keep rocking. to the school man they doing us right man they doing us right i ain't take them watching the gang i live in atlanta now so i was reliving and watching the game like oh my god that's exactly what we did how we lost and erase that out the history bro that don't even matter that game that one and uh the, uh, what was the, the game before? Uh, San Diego State. Yeah. Both of those don't really, they didn't really have, tonight matters. Yes, sir. Tonight matters. You know what I mean? Tonight matters. And you beat Boise at Boise. Yes, sir. So, okay. Okay. business again. That's it. That's it. That's it, man. That's it. That's it, man. Yeah. That's it. 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 That's it.
There are no easy days in the Mountain West, but tonight is exceptionally difficult. It's two of the best in the league going head to head. Let's practice real hard this week. It's just another opportunity to show about what we do, man. Let's run and find out. Let's go. First place on the line. This is going to be another war, one of the best conferences in the country. This is so exciting, buddy. I'm so glad to be with you. The passion in this building is like nothing I've seen this year.
uh, special thanks to Jim and Carol Rob and to all the donors. Really appreciate it. Hey man, this is like we're here tonight's Cat Valley Friends of History Connection of the Hat. A legend has returned to Logan. Stu Morrill recognized tonight, naming the court in his honor. Also, some of the past championship teams here at Utah State being recognized. And the chance of Stu going out all over the team. The layup is there. As Martinez steps through, counted and won. Great returning points. Brown. It's all working. Brown from deep. Control the basketball. Out to Osibor. The run out. Two hand hammer. I feel like the beast, so yeah. I feel like the beast, so yeah, yeah. I feel like the beast, so yeah. I feel like the beast, so yeah. I'm the one who really did it, oh yeah. My brother, yeah, he took the scene and he went to prison because I had the scenes, oh yeah, yeah. I never changed on them, we had fell out and I put the blame on them Used to call me, I got the same number, we been ballin' Just like Andre Drummond, dog and you sadly put chains on them I remember when Polly put chains on them, they was locked up We been glocked up, 2200 on home Elevating me, highly performing In the jungle, that wild with barm Still trying to make it up out of that storm And I never hated, oh, I put them on Thought about giving up, but I kept going When you get money, the problem be pouring Thought about suicide so many times But if I did that, who gonna be there for my son on the way to Oi, FFTV.